Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is my first video technically that I'm filming for the new year. Now the video that I shared before this one, which came out before this one is the bathroom makeover, but I actually filmed that back in September with Architectural Digest, so kind of came out at a little bit of a later time, but I was so excited to share that, and if you have yet to see that bathroom makeover, you have got to check it out. It is probably one of my most extreme makeovers in this house to date, but today we are keeping it a little more simple and a little bit more recreatable in a sense. We are creating some IKEA hacks, which is a continuous series I have done here on my channel for many years. This table right here, is one of the four. And so that should give you an idea of some of the projects in this video. So we are going to dive on into our first. I have four, so definitely stay tuned for all four and let's get started. For our first project, we are using the Bon Scarret Coat Rack, which is actually a new item from Ikea. And when I saw this coat rack, I actually loved it as the coat rack, but I had a vision to turn it into a candelabra. So I picked up some of these candle cups on Etsy, and then also some of this quick weld epoxy, which is a steel reinforced epoxy. So essentially it's like a welded joint and you mix up both sides equal parts with the little popsicle stick that it comes with. And then I'm adding a generous amount of this mixture onto the bottom of each of the little candle cups. And these are gonna go directly directly onto the coat rack itself. So I assembled it just as you would per the instructions and the actual assembly of this kind of candelabra is super simple. You're just going to place each of the candle cups with a good amount of that welding adhesive on the bottom side. I used some tape just to hold them in place, some painter's tape, and added that on the left and right side, just two pieces because it does need a full 24 hours to fully cure down. And I left this to cure overnight once I got all of them in place. And the following morning, I did a quick check just to see as as you can see, I kind of wiggled that around to see if it was going to move or not, and it was really bonded on there. So I pulled off all the tape, added some candles, and turned this into a candelabra. Project here is probably one of my favorite IKEA hacks I have ever created to date. I absolutely love this. I'm using one of these cutting boards here along with four of these drying racks that you could find in the kitchen section at IKEA to create a really cool side table. And whenever I share IKEA hacks, you guys are always asking how I come up with these ideas. And this was one of those projects that I literally was in the kitchen section at IKEA holding random items up together and it just popped into my head. I came home and filmed the project. So essentially, I'm using each of these racks as the legs. So I placed it on either side and used a pencil to mark in the little juice channel that's on the cutting board where I'm going to be drilling the holes. And I actually used a drill bit that was just a little wider than the actual thickness of the grate on the drying rack, but not much bigger because I actually didn't want to have to use any glue or adhesive to kind of put this piece together. I really wanted it to almost be like pressure fit together. So I went around and drilled the holes all the way around the exterior of the cutting board. I did all four sides of it. a little bit of sandpaper to get off any of those little kind of shavings that were left from the drill bit and then some feed in wax is the best product to just shine up and polish any wood i use this on absolutely everything if you've watched my channel in the past you would know i use this on all my furniture i use it whenever i'm doing a wood project a diy it just always brings out the grain and kind of refreshes the wood a little bit so i added that to the cutting board and then started slipping in the little drying racks on either side and as you could see they're pretty much pressure fit into the side and the pressure itself is what holds the leg sturdy upright. So I was shaking it here to show you how sturdy it actually is. And the design and just overall look and feel of this table, once all the legs are added in, it's just so incredible. And if you had to as well, you can also use pliers to kind of force it up towards the top. Uh, we had to do that on one of the sides as well. So I pressed them all in, flipped it upright to reveal our $40 side table that has the coolest edgy feel to it. And I also love how it introduces that silk for tone, which is such a trend this year. Clearly, I had 
had this love for coat racks when I went there because I also ended up picking up this Ekrar coat rack, which is a new find from Ikea as well. But I saw potential to turn this into a floor lamp and that is exactly what we're doing. So I grabbed some black chalkboard spray paint and brought the base of this coat rack outside. This is essentially how it would look in your living room. And I think this was like $15 or so. Now the only color they had in stock was this kind of gray green color, but that was not the exact vibe I was going for. So keep in mind, you could spray paint it however you'd like. So I ended up spraying mine with a matte black spray paint and in the light section I found this Holmesia glass shade and it's kind of like a smoke glass which I liked a lot so I ended up wanting to use this as kind of a free floating shade in the top of the coat rack so I set that coat rack back up and then I ended up ordering a light cord but I accidentally ordered this one that looked like a rope I wanted it to look more like this brown one that's from Murray's bedroom but I accidentally ordered the one that looked like a rope please disregard the farmhousey rope feel of this cord because that's not the exact vibe I was going for but then you just pop it in the top and that finishes off your floor lamp the cord just dangles down and I think that kind of adds an interesting element to the piece had to save the best for last. We are using these $10 LAC side tables that I've always asked myself, does anyone really purchase these from Ikea? Because they are so small and I feel like it almost seems like a kid's table. And the hardest part of this entire project honestly might be assembling the three tables from the start. These tables require a lot of forearm strength. You have to twist the legs in and I will tell you, it's quite challenging. But once you get them all assembled, you're gonna stack them on top of each other so that it looks something like this because we're gonna be turning this into a column and I also use these little brackets that I got at Lowe's. They're just little 90 degree L brackets and I'm using these to attach the tables to each other. So I'm adding one of these at every single leg and connection point to the top of the table underneath. And once those are all connected, it should look something like this, but also be of course secure and one solid piece. Now this plastic sheet I'm using here is called Poly Wall. You can get this at Lowe's. I use this to create the range hood in my kitchen if you remember, and I used it because it's flexible, but it's also really thick. It's like a plasticky material and it comes in a four by eight sheet. So what I started off by doing was thinking that I could actually just bend it around the entire exterior, but sadly that did not work as planned. So I actually ended up measuring each side, which of course all four sides were the same. And I transferred that measurement to our plastic sheet and then just use some scissors to cut that out. And once you have your first one cut out, you can actually use that as a template. So just place it on top and trace out your next one. Use your scissors to cut that out. But this plastic sheet essentially is just a lot easier to use, a lot more user-friendly than having to cut out wood. I personally hate having to cut out wood for a project, so whenever I can get by with something like this, I think it's so much easier. And I just used my electric staple gun, which is a great investment if you do not have one, to secure down the plastic. And the finish that we're using is actually called feather finish, which is essentially like a concrete finish that a lot of people use on tabletops or countertops. Now this is very similar to that Concreta material I used in the bathroom. However, this is kind of more of a widely known product. I believe you could purchase it at Lowe's and Home Depot. I got mine at Lowe's. You just mix it up with water per the directions that you use a trowel and you just trowel this on whatever you are doing and it's kind of giving you that micro cement finish like a nice concrete look so I am going to be adding this on the exterior of our column to cover up all the staples all of the joining of the plastic edges is going to be covered by that cement as well and you could do as many coats of this as you like but I actually only did one thick coat and it looked incredible in the end and another thing I love about this is that the column in the end only weighs about 15 pounds so it's super easy to move around your house if you're someone that likes to restyle often or if you're even making this for like photo set or something but a real concrete column of course this size would probably be upwards of 200 300 pounds and be quite expensive so I love how we were able to achieve the look for quite a bit less and we're just using the lac bases or tables as forms and then kind of our plastic sheeting as a coat over the top and then we're finishing it off with the micro cement which just looks so great once it ends up drying down. I just let mine dry overnight completely and then once it was done, brought it outside, used a nice 180 grit sandpaper to sand down the top surface. It also kind of lightens it up a little bit and that is how I finished off this concrete column.
those were my Ikea hacks for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. And let me know if you guys would like to see more Ikea hacks throughout 2024. Leave a comment below, especially if there's any specific types of projects you want to see, whether it be home decor or furniture or storage. I could definitely make sure to implement those into the next video. And if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the Lone Fox YouTube channel. You can just click that red subscribe button. It is somewhere around the video. And then once you click that, also make sure to click the bell icon next to it. That way you get notified every time I upload a brand new video. And of course, I'm always sharing more content over on Instagram and TikTok, both of which are just Lone Fox Home. I'll put it on the screen right there for you. But I will catch you guys all in my next video, which is probably going to be diving into a new makeover here at the house. And if you have not already checked out the last makeover of the small bathroom, definitely do so. It is such a great watch. Have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.